Maybe, no, I want you. Maybe they can be this tall. What could be that tall? Um, but chicken coop. Maybe that can be this tall. How tall? Show me again. This tall. You think that's tall enough? Yeah. That'll keep everybody out. All the bad, all the predators. Yeah, maybe, maybe a dog can be this tall, so no predators come. So no predators. No, come. no, no. Maybe big predators can, can fit in through there, but they can't fit. We, we should probably make it this this small because chickens can fit through very small spaces. Mm. I'm trying to figure out where to put the chicken coop. Yeah. We gotta find a good spot. Yep. We're gonna get and chickens. We need to also find a good place to put the door for yep. the predators can't get. And it. I think we've settled on um, Plymouth Bard Plymouth Rock Bard Bard Plymouth Rocks. Bard, bard Rock? They call them all sorts of things. Could get a Plymouth Rock, Bard Rock. So I think we should build the coop. Maybe a house can be as big as Daddy is. This is a shed was here when we moved in, and it is very much rotting and falling apart. We're looking at getting rid of it. Just haven't gotten around to it yet. It's not a project. The house could be as big as Daddy. So we've got this space out here, um, right by the road, and by our, the orchard. It's been cleared out. We've been mowing it, and there's blackberries come back if we don't keep mowing. But it's not so bad. Should be a good spot. It's close to the garden, so all of our green waste from the garden could come out here. It's a good spot. I'd like to. I'd like to make the the coop um, fairly mobile. Also, like I don't. I'm not thinking like a tractor, but like more of like a style where you can. <clears throat> maybe we could put some arms on it. We could pick it up, or if we had, um, if we had a tractor, we could move it, but not move it like a tractor that we're gonna move daily. Chicken trailer. Chicken trailer. Probably not on wheels. Just a. Maybe on skids. I'll put it on skids. You know what a skid is, Ferris? What? It's like a like a toboggan sits on skids. It's like a sled. It's like a piece of wood that lies on the ground mm -hmm. so you can slide it. Yes. Kind of makes it a mess of the ground, but it'll work. You got a piece on your chin. <laughs> we'll sweet potato snack out on the <laughs> while walking out. Yeah, if we clear a little bit more of it, it would be plenty of space, don't you think? All the blackberries behind you? Yeah, I mean, not all of them, but to maybe to that tree line. Yeah. Long here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. No. I'm sure they, they have a tool. We were just talking about this. A tool that goes on the end of a, a some of the nicer weed whackers like Husqvarna or Steel makes. You can attach what looks like a hedge trimmer to the end of it, and they're really good for clearing out blackberries. And we get the the Himalayan blackberries out here. <laughs> And they're just a pain to get rid of. Um, so we're looking to think, of, think about what, how we could get one of those out here, borrow, borrow one from somebody, or I don't really want to buy one because it's the kind of thing you would use like once a year. Maybe we could get the attachment and then we could borrow the weed whacker from my dad because he's got a steel. And our weed whacker just couldn't handle it. Yeah, buy the attachment and then borrow the weed whacker. What do you think? A lot of clover around on the property, uh, which kind of has a. I love it, <laughs> but it it might get on some other uh, family members' nerves a little bit because it does tend to attract bees to our yard, and our children tend to like to walk barefoot. But you can see it's coming up. Those little guys right there are clover. They're coming up all over the place in the yard. Um, we're in fall, end of September right now, and it's just coming up everywhere. It's good. There, and I saw it. Were you standing farther than that? And before I saw. Does it work? You are done. Get a roly poly. Roly poly. <laughs> it's getting cold outside. We need to check to make sure that our wood stove is working properly. Yep. 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 This, uh, yep. yep. 
This summer I went through and put a new roof on the house. So we've got a nice steel roof up there and I moved the, removed the chimney. We demolished the old uh, block stacked chimney that was up in the attic and put in a nice new stove pipe. And instead of it going out of the peak of the house, it now goes out of the side, just off of the peak. So I haven't tested it yet. And I think I did a good job, but we're gonna take a look and we're gonna make sure that it's running and we're gonna put a fire in and make sure all the smoke is clearing out of the house and all of the connections are nice and tight. Um, and then I'll, we'll probably you know, pull the plants off the stove from the summertime before we get it started. So we're gonna head outside, get the ladder set up, go up into the attic where the connection is, make sure everything is working properly. And while I'm up there, um, and I's gonna be down there, she's gonna start up the fire for us. And so I can haul her out the window and make sure that everything is coming out the way it should. Previously on this roof, because it is a really low pitch, it had a torch down and it was starting to leak and falling apart top of the roof up here was shingle but because this is a, a 212 pitch which means for every foot of vertical you get two inches of drop because that's a pretty low pitch up here we're a, a 912 by comparison you can see the difference in angles um, you can only do either a torch down which is pretty nasty and ugly or you can do a steel roof so we have to go steel it's a lot of work but it turned out really nice um, definitely better looking than the torch down. This is the standing rib. It's called Snap Lock. It's from Champion. Now what's cool about this one is the fasteners are actually underneath. So this piece, they're one foot panels that run the whole length up. This piece right here is attached underneath this rib. Underneath this rib. And the next piece snaps down on top. I'll show you what a panel looks like from below. Um, and it is, they're real secure. This is our new stovepipe. Previously, we had the stacked uh, block chimney, which is on the ridge line just above the stovepipe. And it was, it was ugly and leaking um, and cracked. It's just a mess. So we got rid of that, knocked it all down, threw it off the roof uh, when we were taking off all the old roofing. And I moved it off of the ridge line because it's a lot easier to. I got the sun behind me there. It's a lot easier if you don't have that on the ridge line to flash it and make sure it's waterproof. So by moving it off of the roof, the ridge line, which is the top portion up there, ooh, that's the ridge line right there behind me. By taking it off of the ridge line, it made it a lot easier. Uh, but we haven't tested it yet. So we're going to get into the attic. We're going to fire up the stove, and I want to make sure that it is. Uh, smoke is coming out where it's supposed to come out. This is a double walled insulated stainless steel pipe and I can tell you that the section that we put in here I've got two four foot sections and that cap right there um, and the, the flat flashing that went in underneath the stove or the, the roof rather. Sorry I can't really get on the roof it's kind of slick up here but this piece is actually tucked in underneath the roofing up here and then sealed around so that no water can get in. That, that was an expensive piece to get all that in there. So we're gonna give it a shot. see it here but up in the peak under the eave there there is a paper wasp nest I gotta be really careful I don't want to get too close to those guys all right so here we are up in the attic it is a mess very gross I have to do a bit of rodent abatement up here. And what you can see if you look over here is that previously the 
chimney went up from the ground down here. Sorry, it's a little bit dark. Went straight up and through the peak right there. What I've done is add in two 15 degree changes so that instead of that, the stovepipe goes up and goes through the side. Um, it's not gonna draft as well as a result of that because, um, well, it's just got that pitch change in it, but we should still be able to get some, some pretty good draft going. So this goes up and through, and that's where we saw it on the outside. This is that double walled stainless because we do not have an insulated attic. So it's important that you make sure any time the stovepipe has left your house and is in an uninsulated or unheated um, area during the winter time, that you have a double wall. Uh, if you don't, then all the creosote will tend to build up on the inside of that uh, stovepipe, and you could result in a chimney fire because the creosote accumulates on the inside of the chimney pipe when there is a large change in temperature between the inside of the chimney pipe and the outside of the chimney pipe. So in this case, we would have um, the chimney pipe running through the attic that is uninsulated, unheated, and you would result in creosote buildup in the attic space here, as well as up above. So we use the double wall insulated variety, which again is a little bit more pricey, but for the, you know, the safety of our house, making sure that we're not gonna have a chimney fire, I think it was worth it um, to have it come through. What we're gonna do now is I'm gonna have uh, my wife Go ahead and just start up a fire, run a small fire in the fireplace, get a little bit smoky, and we'll see, make sure all of these connections are sealed. This right here is the main piece. You can see the stack block chimney is this piece right here, and that went all the way up, and we demolished it down to here. It's kind of, a, it's, it's a mess, because, um, yeah, I was doing a lot of demo in here, and actually, right here, you can see where I stepped through the floor. Um, that goes straight down to the kitchen. <laughs> so that was not a good day. Um, and then this piece is anchored in place. Uh, and attached and then all of these are secured. So we're gonna fire up the stove and we'll see what happens Okay, and I ready when you are Yeah, so we got fire going in here and there's no smoke coming out here Everything seems to be secure And I'm hearing reports from outside that the smoke is coming out the top of the chimney and the fire is drawing in the fireplace. So, success! It's good. We'll have the, this is primarily how we heat our house in the winter. We use firewood and smoke, uh, or I'm sorry, and we use our, our wood stove. So having the, this going good for us is gonna be, you know, that's really important and we wanted to get a check in because we just had the first day of fall yesterday, September 22nd, and we need to start burning this because it's getting a little bit crisp at nights. So that's that's good news. It uh, makes me feel better about um, the work that I've done here. So we'll check it out and go outside and see it coming out the chimney. It looks and smells like success. A little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but we do have some smoke coming out the top there. Pretty small, it's a small fire. So that's heartening to see that that's coming out there. It's always uh, nice when you do a big project like that. And you've got one piece that can make you a little bit nervous, right? And the, the chimney was that for me because um, we need it to heat the house. Um, it involves a lot of flashing. And in order to really make sure that it's functioning properly, you gotta, you gotta get a fire going in it so you can see how the smoke is going, um, if it's coming out correctly, and if, it's if, if you've got good draw on it, because that's important. The amount of, of air that it's sucking out is, is gonna be really critical to ensuring that um, you're gonna have a good fire through the winter. So that's, that's super important. Um, and I'm, I want to go inside and look at the fireplace, but I've been locked out. Uh, so I'm going to see if I can get inside. Daddy, I'm making ears. Ears for what? For this crown. This to be silly. 
Silly ears, I guess. It smells a little bit like the fire in here, but you know, the first, when you first get it going, usually that happens. This. <laughs> All right, I got some, a little bit of work to do there. We got a fire going here. Any fire pillows? Um, if you don't have them, these are, you can get fireplace gloves. Um, we got some gloves and these guys right here that are nice. Um, they're actually welding gloves and they were great because you, you could just stick your hand right in the fireplace um, to do whatever needs to be done. Um, and I'm gonna have my lovely wife come over here and hold the camera for me. All right, so coming close, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you this. This is probably why it smells a little bit smoky in here and we might not be getting good, good draw. If you look at this connection right here, this is something we've been having problems with. I'm gonna pull it apart just so you can see it. You see how that's not connected? So it's pretty easy fix. We take it apart when we clean it every summer. Um, you push those together and we're gonna get a better draw that way. Obviously, you're not gonna get a great draw if you've got a big cap where the smoke's leaking out into the house. Um, it's a good system. This stove is actually built with a double wall insulation on the outside so that it can be close to the back wall. And we've got quite a bit of space here. We could be significantly closer, but it works well for us. It keeps the house nice and warm and it has enough space inside that you can really pack it up at night and keep it full all night and it'll burn until the next morning. When we do that though, it actually gets too hot in here. Um, it, there's not really that many cold nights, cold enough that you have to fill it up to full capacity and burn it all night long in order to keep the house warm or at a, a reasonable temperature. So usually it goes out overnight, but we do a, go through, you know, a bit of wood, three cords, four cords last year, I think in order to heat the house all winter. A lot of that was um, cedar also, and a lot of it was wet cedar. And we still did fine, not too much creosote built up and the house was comfortable and warm all winter long, which is great. Uh, so that was just a video I wanted to show you guys about the construction I did up in the roof. Um, and in the attic and all the construction I did on the roof with our new roofing, the new stove pipe up there, and just testing it out, making sure that the work is sound until we start getting to really cold nights. We probably won't have to fire this up again for a few more weeks. Um, it's a little bit crisp in the evenings, but it's not that bad. So that was more just a, a test run and just a trial to see how it is. And as an example, you can see we've got the wood stove going right now as an example uh, to get that, but we also have the, the front door open with the screen. <laughs> And we've got the windows in the kitchen open. So it's, it's not really hot enough. Um, that's all I got for you today.